Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure will take us over to Santa Ana to the Bowers Museum, which just recently reopened its doors. And there is a new exhibit that I've been very, very much looking forward to checking out. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Just grabbing these couple items and heading out. Yep, I agree, Big the Foot. It is kind of a coincidence we're headed to Main Street. City limit sign right there, Santa Ana. I have arrived. This parking lot is an additional $6 fee, not included with the $23 admission. There's a little stand where the gentleman takes your, right there. And I purchased my ticket online, makes things very convenient and they give you a QR code for admission. The museum normally is $13, but for the special exhibit on top of it, it's another $10, so $23. But for that, you get the, the new exhibit plus the rest of the museum all included. And then I guess you could factor in the $6 parking, which is a separate charge. There may be street parking close by, but once I pulled in, just made sense to just go ahead and park here. Located at the corner of Main Street and Bowers Museum. Doesn't have a street or a way or a boulevard, but that states Bowers Museum. Whoop! Well, I just noticed there's a, a red hand. I was caught red-handed almost crossing here. Gotta wait a moment. A rather large banner hanging there. Inside the Walt Disney Archives, 50 years of preserving the magic. Discover the magic behind the mouse. This is gonna be good. Classic car alert. Also lining the side of the sidewalk up top states the dates March 7th 2020 is when it began a little bit of a curveball however over recent months and it has just reopened and will continue through August 30th of 2020 it's back 2002 the physical address 2002 Main Street, Santa Ana. There's also a restaurant here as well. I'm seeing some signage with some information up top. It's the welcome sign. And then down here, some of the regulations on what to wear, maintaining a little space and cleaning of the hands. There is products available that are provided. You might be able to also purchase tickets at the desk. They're just checking me in, but I did pre-order, but I think you can get them here at the desk as well. I followed up on a little bit more information about that. You can purchase tickets at the front counter. However, there is no re-entry. Even though I'm in the museum going into the exhibit, there is no re-entry. So if you need to use the facilities, get a drink, do that before heading in, because once you're in and out, you have to pay again to go back in. Along the ground they have these one-way stickers and these stanchions guiding the way in. And then up top, pretty dang cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> gotta, gotta love this elephant flying through the air. And up top there's Walt himself. They're doing a presentation of a little slideshow of Walt and a few other gentlemen and groups of people. And straight ahead there he is himself. Right there. The tale began in 1923 when Walt arrived in Hollywood. Over the next four decades, this one-of-a-kind storyteller induced the world, introduced the world to unforgettable characters. The archives officially began on June 22nd, 1970. So yeah, 50 years. A recreation of his office, not the one that was in Burbank in the studios, but the one that was used in the film Saving Mr. Banks with Tom Hanks. Nearly everything has a description along the side, either the wall or in front of the items itself. And here's a kind of a side view. And there's Walt looking over his recreated 
desk area. Looks as if some, there's some Disneyland artwork in here. These are surveying items back when the park was being constructed in the early 50s, as well as some analyst books. Brass survey markers, you can see. You can see the inscription there on each and every one of them. Artwork representing an aerial overview from 53. States most of this has never left the archives, but for now, the first time, they're bringing it to us. Now, up oh, in there, up. Oh, there's the man himself. Fantasia poster also used in Saving Mr. Banks. An original animation desk used at the studios back in the 40s. And some visual development artwork here along this side of the wall. An assortment of concept features up there on that cork board also. Now this has changed a little bit during the current times. There are no books you can handle, but they do have these, these, these versions of cloth script story pages from Steamboat Willie back in 1928. And then 10 years later, the brave little tailor from 38. And there he is down there selling, selling some hot dogs at the carnival. The carnival kid. Also keep the doors closed while the company is doing their filming. Hair styling and makeup department and the makeup department. There's a little suitcase there as well. A menu from the commissary. Monstro's morsel. It was only 55 cents. Oh, I see what they did there, 55 cents. And the visitor pass here. Studio visitor pass, a facsimile. Back in 1940, you get a chef's plate special for 45 cents. It's a good deal. I really like how descriptive everything is with all the information next to all the items. Snow globe from Mary Poppins. Oh my goodness, this is the, this is the snow globe from Mary Poppins. What the heck? One of the earliest film prop props incorporated into the archives. amazing. Looks like he's overlooking Epcot. Yeah, that's Epcot. I see Spaceship Earth and some other landmarks. And speaking of Mary Poppins, Look at this case. The carpet bag used by Julie Andrews and the Congo Queen. That's a attraction model vehicle from the Jungle Cruise, obviously 1955. Using a couple TV specials, a trip through Adventureland and something called Waterbirds, which came out the next year. Also screen use are these blocks and from the Shaggy Dog, the Magic Ring, and one of my favorites, starring Angela Lansbury, bed knobs and broomsticks. Wow, that's the bed knob right there. That's incredible. Okay, I'm kind of nerding out just a little bit. The sword from Zorro and this cap is from Davy Crockett. Worn by Fess Parker himself in the Sunday Night Special. It was a serial that aired from 1954 up until 55. Merchandise has certainly changed over the years. You used to be able to get these oversized dolls. You still can if you go to antique stores and vintage places. Look at that Goofy down there. Goofy is shorter than Mickey and Minnie. That's different. This carrying case here. Never seen that one before. And a Bambi plush right there in the middle. An assortment of books and a stencil of Oswald. Yeah, see the stencil down there? This dates back to 1930. Cute little guy. When it comes to the Anaheim theme parks, there is a lot of, a lot of history and quite a bit of it is here in this glass case as well, including old school theme park tickets, name tags, 10 year service award. Notice the price on that from, from 55, one, one dollar. You really don't see too many mementos from Laugh-O-Gram Studios in Kansas City. That's the King of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland, the, the model that was used for doing the animation right there. Contract for the Alice comedies way back in 1923. Good old days, way before my time. And if you remember a lot of the early animated films, they would 
they would have a, a real book that they would open for the intros. These are some of those books right here. These three items. The first from Snow White, the second prop storybook from Cinderella, and the third, the largest of the three, is from Sleeping Beauty. These are seen in each of the beginning of those animated classics. Doesn't get much more awesome than that. Wasn't expecting to see anything from Return to Oz in here, but there is this very large painting. It's not wanting to focus. There it goes. It's in focus now. Return to Oz. When I was young, it kind of scared me a little bit, especially those creatures that rolled around. Also, I believe it was Feruza Balk's first movie. Also, some other artifacts I was not expecting in here would be these Edward Scissorhand pieces. You see there's Edward down there, played by Johnny Depp. That's kind of how we know him, but this shows the progression as it went along. Yeah, wasn't expecting to see anything Edward Scissorhands related in here. Production artwork from Herbie the Love Bug from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Whoa, is that the Evil Queen? Yep, that's the Evil Queen right there from Snow White. She's like st staring attentively at me. A little nod to Walt Disney World. This was in the Emporium on Main Street. Not Disneyland, but the Florida counterpart. Look out for this fantastic piece from the Jungle the Jungle Overlook, Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. And this, to me, needs no introduction as designated and proven right there on this little, this little plaque. I'm pretty sure this is the one that would come out of the wall, not from the ceiling. This is the one that would come out of the wall towards the ride vehicle. And from the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. And uh, that's Rex from Disneyland there on the left. Star Tours 1987. As much as I love C-3PO, I definitely miss Rex. And just to reconfirm, all this is documented here. Audio animatronic. Oh man, I was hoping there'd be Haunted Mansion stuff and I am not disappointed, including the Master Gracie tombstone back from 71 at Magic Kingdom. In fact, all three of these headstones used to reside there as well as this set of hitchhiking ghosts. Beware. Oh, that's the Rocketeer over there too. I see the Rocketeer. Jetpack and suit worn by Billy Campbell. In all honesty, there's a heck of a lot going on in here. Dick Tracy right there too. Next to Emilio Estevez's jacket. Four or five foot tall Roger Rabbit reference model next to Wilson from Castaway. That's that's from Castaway. And clearly I'm not the only one overly excited. Roger is pretty stoked on his new friend as well. Props from the Beauty and the Beast live action from 2017. Pirates of the Caribbean as well is accounted for. Okay, Winnie the Pooh I expected, but the puppets from What About Bob? One of my favorite Bill Murray movies, that's for sure. Dr. Leo Marvin's a genius. Could it? Oh, could this be from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? I think, I think it is. Yep, that's the shrinking right. Technical term, shrinking machine. The one that Rick Moranis used as the inventor back in 89. This is the screen used one that they recently refurbed, I do believe. Herbie from the fully loaded version and this bicycle piano from Wonderful World of Disney. And let's not forget that Fred McMurray drove this actual vehicle in the absent-minded professor. This is the one. I can just see this 1915 Model T flying through the air. Wow, chimney sweep broom head there from Mary Poppins and glasses worn in 1982's Tron and Christopher Lloyd wore this and Roger Rabbit. Another look at those two pieces from Honey I Shrunk. And I can never physically fit in that outfit, but I could probably fit into that. Right in the middle there, the outfit worn by Angelina Jolie from The Lion King, this, this model of Pride Rock. I see Roger over there, way over there, kind of looking at me. Such an expansive array of, such an expansive museum. There's a, there's a lot to see here. Next to Herbie is Dick Van Dyke right there. And look, there's, there's Lillian with a recreation of the courtyard that's, that's located up at the studios in Burbank. Whoops, I didn't get a look at that plane up there from the ceiling. Don't know how I missed this. It's also from the Rocketeer. As I exit out of this exhibit, of course there is Walt who needs no introduction. 
about here is the current archive staff right here. I thank them as well. Also on the way out there is a gift shop and I was reading online that this just now reopened. This might be the first day where the gift shop is now reopened. The exhibit's been open about a week reopened, but the gift shop is the first day. Some pretty good t-shirts here. They might have more inside, but these are, these are pretty nice. This might be the first time I have seen Disney merchandise in months that I've seen it with my own eyes. These are some vinyl records. This, oh man, this uh, old school record player. It's pretty good. A day at Disneyland. Narrated by Jiminy Cricket and Walt Disney. Got some tiki stuff here, and also the same shirt design comes in a in a little carry bag as well. A good assortment of books. Oh, this one right here is one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one right there by Chris Nichols Toshin. Yeah, that's a good one. Highly recommend getting that. He's given the whole state a big hug. I have other items as well that are not related to the the Disney exhibit, but there's quite a bit. The ink and paint. The ink and paint book, which is there. Not seeing a price tag anywhere visible. I don't want to go rooting around looking for it, but this is a box set of flip books from the nine old men. There they are listed there. So each book is detailed to each of the fellows. Prices are on the shirts are as follows. The t-shirts here are $22.99. I believe that is a long sleeved, long sleeved sweater style shirt, $39.99. And the other ones are 44 for the full-on hoodie there. Quite a few rare books along in here for $350. You can pick this one up, The Illusion of Life. And for nearly $800, The Snow White. The art is in the making, $795. Also some Bambi, Pinocchio, and Peter Pan. I kind of wish they had this in a t-shirt design. I don't really have a use for another bag, but if this was on a t-shirt, I would totally sport it. Also, I have been wearing an appropriate t-shirt. That was worth it. Totally worth it. Especially for anyone who is really into Disney history, the, the archive history, theme parks, movies, a lot of props and screen used items worth checking out for the for the price was pretty good for the time being the only entrance is the one i just entered and exited from but it's a very expansive piece of property all this belongs to them it's been a few years since i've been here and this was the entrance that i i utilized But for now, the, the main entrance they're considering and the side entrance. Everything went well. Limited capacity. They request that you buy tickets in advance. But they do sell them at the door. Everything was spaced out. All the appropriate stickers along the ground and everything kind of stationed off. It was a good experience. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. It helps keep you in the loop and update on future uploads here on this channel. Take it a step further. Ring that notification bell. And if you are in this area, if you're in Southern California, just down the road from Disneyland, and you feel like diving into a little bit of history, some amazing, seeing some amazing things, one of the few when it comes to Anaheim, Santa Ana, Garden Grove, Orange County area, even though Disneyland does not have a set date to open the parks, Downtown Disney does, but this is about as close as you can get to seeing and being around good old classic Disney. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. They were cones.